Hello, I am Jonathan D. Ray. I am the Director of Career Development here at Soak University. I identify as a black uh, male, cisgender male, and uh, it informs me on a daily basis from the time I was a young child through uh, now in year 60. And, and every experience I have has been shaped by it, the good, the bad, the ugly, the positive, the negative, but it's all part of the soup that I am, and, um, and it'll carry with me till, till I transition on. In the recent uprisings that have occurred and uh, dealing with all the issues that we've dealt with for centuries now, uh, one thing I will say is how impressed I am with this current generation, what they've brought to the table, uh, the intellect, the passion. Uh, back in my day, certainly we did some of those things, but also it was about getting in people's face and um, answering, you know, issues and, and dealing with issues, you know, often in, in, in violence and in ways of that, you know, with my fist. And, and so for me to uh, see that happen, that inspires me. Certainly as, uh, over the years, just, just living the life and trying to be an example, sometimes just for yourself, uh, let alone the others that are in your life. So that's always been very important to me. Uh, I've become quite a passionate reader. I think James Baldwin should have his own holiday, let's be real. Uh, because Simply because, and I certainly don't have you know, Mr. Baldwin's eloquence, but just the way that they view the world and they can speak with passion about their perspectives and their views and their desires and their wants and their resistance. Uh, and so that term resistance means a lot of different things and, uh, and over the years it's helped me build an armor. Sometimes that armor is tears, sometimes it's getting in someone's face, sometimes it's walking away, sometimes it's, it's uh, 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 sharing my intellect, which I'm still working on, uh, and letting them know that uh, I fully understand where you're coming from and what you're saying and I'm nobody's fool. Staying involved, uh, learning, growing. Uh, one of the things that I do everywhere I go is number one, uh, and I and I and again I grew up in a small town in Ohio. At times I lived in the predominantly white side of town. At times I lived in the predominantly black side of town. But one of the things that I've always done, I think, is very very important uh, to to spend black dollars, to have that multiplier effect within the black community. Whether it's a restaurant whether it's buying gifts, whether it's just spending time and contributing and becoming part of that community, even if it's for a short period of time. But certainly letting them know that, you know, your dollars and your business matter to me. I grew up in a family of entrepreneurs. Uh, my grandparents and uncles and aunts all own businesses. So I've had that legacy and understand just how important that is. Uh, and so be doing those things and, and spending my money and my time in those communities, contributing, uh, in another life, uh, you know, I've been involved in theater and art and film. And, and just being part of that in communities, I think, is so important. Back in Cleveland, I was part of Caramu Theater, which has a long history of, of excellence in the arts. And it, and it was the home theater for the likes of Ruby Dee and Ozzie Davis and Langston Hughes and so many, many others, so many more that you actually see on TV today. So that's part of that legacy, and I carry that with me everywhere that I go. Just, I love what black people do. I love how we act. I love, you know, the way we embrace each other. I don't know if I can curse, but the way we talk, you know, <laughs> but I, I just love that engagement. Uh, I love hearing and sitting around barber shops and, and, and hearing, you know, because for many of us, that, that's kind of our, our therapy and, and what we gain. And, um, and I love our ideas. And, and years ago, I had this, this photo that said black is a rainbow and it had different views of, of black women. Uh, and, and showing their, their grace and their elegance. And, and I believe that. We're not monolithic in thought or action. We have conservative blacks. We have blacks who are liberal and somewhere in between. We have blacks with fresh ideas. We have blacks who embrace new ideas and, and those who, who um, continue to hold on to tradition. So having all those elements I think is important. And to me that's just the excitement of being who we are and showing what we do and the impact we have on the world. Uh, certainly my family. Uh, my, my grandfather uh, owned businesses in the small little town we lived in. My mother 
um, who raised us by herself. We lost our father at a very young age. She made sure that we were exposed to uh, all that is black. Um, I actually, in my office, I have a little crocheted map of Africa in red, black, and green that I made when I was in fifth grade. And, uh, and, and forgotten about it. And, and then when my mother passed a number of years ago, we were cleaning out her office and there it sat. It had been in her office all these years, so I proudly carry that with me. And so having those people and the reminders, but also just the people that I run into here at SOCA, to, you know, those students who remind me. Uh, I spent time this afternoon with a student who uh, is from New Orleans, and just kind of hearing you know, their rhythm and their life and, and the things that they're doing. And so having that contrast and, uh, you know, uh, connecting with others who you know have similar views diff different views similar perspectives but we all kind of carry that same medallion metal that, uh, that that makes the world beautiful they've certainly evolved um, you know that core I'm still I'm still peanut from a dine Ohio you know I was a big dreamer and I don't know if I was five or ten or fifteen years old but I remember literally looking at the sky and saying I want to be part of the world I didn't know what that meant I certainly didn't know how I was going to get there but having that and, and through learning and reading and experiencing things and saying wow we you know we navigated the world you know we're, we're originators of science and math and art and there's all these people doing these wonderful things and you know what um, they do it, so, so I can do it too. Why not me? Why not me? So having those experiences still stay with me. Um, I still have that same wanderlust I always did. Uh, certainly life has shown us all. You know, we have, we've had good experiences and bad experiences, humbling experiences, which I think we all need. I certainly did. But I think it all leads us in the same direction. And, and ultimately, I think we end up where we're supposed to be if, if we're sincere about it, if we have that truth. If I remember my forefathers' efforts that they made to make sure that we had different experiences, one of the things that they would do, which still stays with me, is we literally would travel all over the place. We would drive back and forth to California when I was eight, nine years old. And, uh, and now as an adult, I understood that at that time, there were probably a whole lot of places we couldn't stay and we couldn't be. We always stayed at Howard Johnson's, not giving them a plug, but there was probably a reason behind that. You know, but for us it was a wonderful experience and I knew that the world was a lot bigger than Medina, Ohio, population 10,000. So those experiences stayed with me, the places I've traveled, I've been to 15 countries now. And all that started with, you know, my parents and grandparents making sure that, you know, they knew that, yes, we're, we're part of this world, yes, we have an obligation to this world, yes, but be proud of who you are and where you're from and you can share that experience wherever you, wake, wherever you may go. Follow your path, follow your vision, trust that you're right. Uh, don't be afraid of, and I share this, and I have a 24 year old son, but I share this with him. Uh, you know, uh, what are you willing to do to be who you want to be? Um, be willing to take what comes with the choices you make, and don't be afraid of those first. The first time you go somewhere, the first time in a new city, the first time in a new apartment or a new job, you have to have those experiences because everything you want in life is on the other side of those first. So don't, don't, no matter where you're from, you have the opportunity to do it and you have these windows of success that can exist. And you define what success is, you know, and quite frankly, as a parent, very often, you know, you may come have ideas that are different from ours. That's okay, follow those paths, we'll adjust, you know, trust me. But, but just follow your path, follow your vision, and know that you have every right to be in the space that you're in and beyond. It's tough at times. Uh, I'll be very honest, with some recent events, uh, I was not in a good place uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, with, the, with the, the, the brutal assassination of Mr. Nichols. Because every time that happens, I think of my son who's 24. And those incidents have happened in places I've lived in Akron, Ohio, in Columbus, Ohio, in other places. And so it, it, was, it was tough and we have those conversations with him. And he's heard these conversations since he was a young child, but still, you know, and it's less about me because I've lived my life and experience, but you know, one false move and then, then the story changes and you know, we're, we're sharing those things. So it's tough at times. Um, for me, it's, uh, I talked about having armor. One of the things that I do 
is, you know, I, I break time in the middle of the day to go exercise and work out. And I, yes, I get some physical elements from it and, and physical blessings, but it's more mental and spiritual. It's kind of a cleansing. I go there and by myself, kind of clear my head and listen to my OG music. And you know, today was Al Green. And, <laughs> and so, you know, just having those experiences helps me and I come back. But the hope comes in, in the folks that I see here. The hope comes in a place like Soka, that quite frankly, yes, we have our issues, we have our challenges, but also, you know, it, it, it's interesting to say this, I worked in higher education for 30 years and this is the most intimately diverse place that I've been. And, uh, and whether that's a good thing or bad thing, I don't know. Is there a lot of work to do? Yes. Would I like to see more people like me here? Absolutely. But hope is something that you just have to believe something better is going to come. And it's the same hope I had when I was looking at the stars in, in Medina, Ohio, saying, I want to be part of the world. Help me get there.